Hello and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited you're here to learn about six great schools uh, tonight. We have a few housekeeping announcements though before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including your name in your question, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their institution. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening for Pennsylvania students. We hope you've enjoyed some of the sessions already, and we encourage you to sign up for more. This presentation, like all presentations, is being recorded. They'll be available within about a week at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. I'm excited to welcome our very first school tonight. We'll be hearing from Pace University. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Mummy, and I am the Associate Director of Admissions on Pace's New York City campus. So to get started talking about PACE. Uh, so first of all, I wanna talk about our campus locations. So PACE does have two campuses, one in New York City and one about 45 minutes outside of New York City. So if you're looking for something urban or suburban, we definitely have that fit for you. Our New York City campus is located in downtown Manhattan, right by the Brooklyn Bridge and City Hall. So we're in the financial district area. We are definitely a non-traditional campus because we are located in the city. So unlike a traditional school where you might be walking between buildings, at Pace, a lot of your classes will be in the same buildings and you'll move from floor to floor as opposed from building to building. We do have four different residence halls on our New York City campus and housing is guaranteed for all four years. So with that uh, housing, it does have a, a campus feel even though we are in the city as well. Most of our programs are available on both campuses, but one program that is specific to our New York City campus is our performing arts program. So if you are looking for anything in the performing arts, musical theater, commercial dance, acting, all of that will have to be on the New York City campus. Something else to just note about our New York City campus is we do have about 6,400 undergraduate students on that campus. So definitely a bit larger than our Westchester campus. And our Westchester campus, like I said, is located outside of the city. So it's about 45 minutes north of the city in Westchester, specifically in a town called Pleasantville. So this campus is very traditional. It's a 200 acre campus with about 2,600 undergraduate students. We do have uh, six different residence halls up in Westchester and housing is guaranteed on our Westchester campus, just like it's guaranteed on our New York City campus. We do have Division II athletics up in Westchester. So if you are looking for a varsity sport, you will have to choose Westchester as your home base campus. And two majors that are specifically on our Westchester campus are the nursing program, as well as our di digital cinema and filmmaking major. There is a shuttle that connects both campuses a few times a day. So if you're interested in one campus, but have one or two things that you would like to do on the other campus, whether it's take a class, see a football game, come down from Westchester into the city just to, for fun or for an internship, uh, you definitely have access to take advantage of both of those campuses. Something that is unique about just Pace University overall is our Pace Path. So we wanna make sure that our students are taking advantage of everything that PACE has to offer. So we have developed this uh, customizable four-year plan that will actually start your first official day on campus. You'll work closely throughout your time at PACE with your academic advisor uh, to make sure that your major is something that makes sense for what you're looking to do. You know of any minors or double majors or internships or getting connected with mentors in the field, all of that, to really make sure by the time you graduate, you are career ready. That is definitely something we say on our campus a lot. On the academic side at Pace, we have over 150 different accelerated and combined degrees split between six different subschools. So we have our College of Health Professions, which has nursing as well as health science, our Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, which has everything from psychology to biology to performing arts. We have a law school at the graduate level. If you're interested in pursuing law school, you can do a three plus three program at Pace. Our School of Business has um, an accreditation that only 2% of business schools in the country have. It's an AACSB accreditation. So we have everything from management to marketing to accounting to finance. 
our School of Education has early childhood, childhood and adolescent education. And then our Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems has computer science, information systems, information technology, and so much more. At PACE, when you apply to the university, uh, you are not really locked into one academic school. So if you are undecided, that is totally fine. Uh, and we do have a lot of students who do come into the university undecided every year, start taking some classes and then figure out what they're looking to do. Even though we have close to 9,000 students, our average class size is about 20 students and our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So we have these big school opportunities with internships, like I'll touch on a little bit later. And then when it comes down to being in the classroom, you are not another number. You will get to connect with your advisor, connect with your professors, and really, really make that PACE path personalized. Internships are a huge thing at PACE. Uh, so you can start connecting with career services as early as your first semester on campus. And we have career and internship fairs all the time. Even virtually with COVID, we have not been affected. And Almost all of our students uh, have done internships throughout their time at the university. We recommend that students do three to four internships during their time at PACE. Um, and as you can see by those pictures there, uh, we have some really cool connections. So the student on the top uh, interned at The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And then the bottom student is on the set of Saturday Night Live. And we have students who intern uh, with the FBI, who intern with Apple and Google, the big four accounting firms, the big five publishing firms, all of that. In regards to financial aid, uh, so when you apply to the university, you'll be automatically considered for a scholarship and separately you can apply for financial aid. 95% of our students do have some type of financial aid they receive. And on our website, we have a uh, merit scholarship estimator and a net price calculator. So you can go online, plug in your information and preview all of that before you apply. Uh, in regards to the application, so, there are a few things that you'll need to complete your application. They are all listed here. We are on the common application and we do also have the PACE application. Here are our deadlines. So we have early decision, early action one, early action two. Uh, something to really keep in mind is if you're interested in performing arts, there's a December 15th deadline. And then our nursing deadline is February 15th. And that is it from me. So this is my contact information. I'll also drop it in the chat. Let me know if you have any questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Megan, for sharing about Pace University. Our next school today is going to be the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Okay, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dino. I'm with the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. We are an aircraft maintenance training school, and uh, we train uh, young men and women to work on anything that flies. Uh, what you're looking at there is our is a website, pia.edu forward slash learn more. And uh, again, if you'd like to scan the QR code, that's perfectly fine. And you can schedule a personal tour as well as sign up for the open house. Now, we've been doing this for over 90 years. Now, you can see since 1929 uh, to 2021, we're the second oldest aircraft maintenance training school in the country. And you can see also, uh, you might find yourself asking, you know, what exactly is an aircraft maintenance technician? Well, an aircraft maintenance technician is someone who can build, maintain, troubleshoot, and repair anything that flies, that includes a plane, a helicopter, a drone, an airship, a rocket, a missile. So again, we're not a four-year college degree. Four-year colleges are great. Again, this is just a little alternative, maybe a 21 months or 16 month program would be best for you. And you can see what type of work our students can get into. When you think of a career as a mechanic, often the first thing that comes to mind is working in an auto shop, doing the repair and maintenance on our everyday vehicles. But what about those vehicles that travel thousands of miles in mere hours, transporting goods and people across the world as part of their everyday commute? Aviation maintenance technicians are the men and women who ensure the safety and reliability of our aircraft each day. Before a plane takes off, an AMT has worked tirelessly to ensure that the aircraft is mechanically safe to fly. By diagnosing mechanical and electrical problems, completing routine inspections, repairing damage to wings, landing gears, and other components, and certifying that aircraft meets the standards set forth by the FAA. This work is led by an elite group of professionals known as AMP mechanics, who train for a minimum of 1,900 hours to understand the complex and unique systems that make up an aircraft, working on planes, jets, drones, blimps, helicopters, or rockets. 
Their highly specialized skill set makes them sought after employees, not only in the aviation sector, but in many non-aviation related fields. If you are seeking a career that is fast paced, challenging, and hands on, then a career as an aviation maintenance technician might be right for you. Okay, so you can see this obviously isn't for everyone, uh, but just so you know, PIA was ranked the number one two year trade school in the nation by Forbes magazine in 2018. Uh, they haven't done a new study, so I guess we're still number one. About out of all the schools they looked at nationwide, we were ranked number one based on graduate success, affordability, completion success, and student experience. Uh, we have four campuses. Uh, Pittsburgh's been our main campus. That's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania since, two, uh, since 1929. Again, like I said, going on 92 years now. Uh, we've had the Youngstown, Ohio campus since 2006, uh, Hagerstown, Myrtle Beach, uh, Hagerstown, uh, Harrow, uh, Ohio, and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, when it comes to our school, we are a nonprofit educational institution. We are accredited, approved for financial aid, STEM related, offer the FA certification and considered a military friendly school. Uh, when it comes to salaries, uh, people come to our school looking to be not in too much debt when they come out and maybe getting a good paying job. You can see the salaries do range uh, from 37 to $49,000. Some people make more, some people make less. Pretty good range though for a 16 or 21 month program. Uh, 63,000 is the medium income. Now, of course, uh, that means an equal number makes more, an equal number makes less. So pretty good income uh, for a two year program. Uh, you can see also, uh, again, when it comes to the programs we offer, the maintenance program is the main program offered at all four uh, campuses. Uh, in that program, you will receive an FAA certification. Now that certification is your ticket to success. Uh, you can get that with an associate in specialized technology degree in 21 months at the Pittsburgh campus, or you can get a diploma in 16 months at the Youngstown, Hagerstown, and also Myrtle Beach campus. Now, that FAA certification allows you to work on the body of the aircraft. We call that the airframe. That includes sheet metal and welding, as well as composite materials and hydraulics and pneumatics. Uh, the power plant simply means engines. That includes jet, piston, and rocket engines. We also do power generation and ignition systems. Now, when it comes to employment, uh, you can see uh, before COVID-19, of course, things have been affected somewhat. We were looking at some very nice employment. Uh, again, these, uh, these numbers, again, will probably come back for sure. Uh, aviation has never been shut down. Again, it has been affected. But like I said, the jobs are still there. Uh, when it comes to getting a job, we do place in 38 states, including Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, you can see we have jobs in Pennsylvania, Ohio, all the way down the coast, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida out to Texas, San Diego, Los Angeles, and of course in Seattle, Washington, working at the Boeing plant, uh, building those triple sevens as well as the 747s. Uh, when it comes to our employers, you can see a nice array of different types of work. Uh, Boeing, of course, General Electric Aviation in Charleston, South Carolina. We have people working at Constant Aviation, Republic Airlines, Gulfstream, as well as Bombardier. Again, uh, when, if you'd like to visit our website, pia.edu and take the readiness quiz. Uh, this will tell you if this is a good fit for you or not. Uh, again, uh, our open house would be Saturday, May 15th at 11 a.m. This is a virtual open house. If you'd like to sign up for that, you're more than welcome to go to pia.edu forward slash learn more, or you can scan the code there and put your personal information in for a tour as well as uh, to attend the virtual open house. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, like I said, I have a young man working with me, Brandon Weiss, who can also uh, help answer any questions. And um, that's it, thank you. Thank you so much, Gina, for presenting on PIA today. Our next school is going to be Immaculata University. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley. I am an admissions counselor from Immaculata University. Super excited to be meeting with you guys today. Um, just a little bit about Immaculata. We were founded in 1920. Um, we became a university in 2002 and we became co-ed in 2005. Um, these are just some fast facts about the university. 93% of the class of 2018 graduates completed some type of internship, student teaching experience, clinical rotation, or field experience during their time at Immaculata. So it is very important to us that our students are getting these hands-on experiences and building their resumes throughout college. So we do offer these internships and field experiences in all of our majors. Some of them are required, some of them are not. They're highly recommended, um, but most of our students do complete some kind of field experience by the time they graduate. 
Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. So an average class size is about 15 students. Um, larger class sizes will be no more than 20, 25 students per class. So you have those personalized connections um, with your professors. They get to know you really well and become a really great support system for our students. Um, and 94% of the class of 2019 graduates um, secured a job or were attending full-time graduate school within nine months of graduation. So those field experiences, those small class sizes, as well as the numerous amount of ways that you can get involved in Immaculata really contribute to that 94% and setting our students apart and making them more marketable when it comes to applying for these jobs and graduate programs. These are a list of all the majors that we have to offer. Um, the ones that are bolded are ones that are more popular amongst our campus or they're bolded because they're new majors that we just started offering this past year. So we're always looking into programs that we can add and start offering for our students. Um, in addition to our majors, we also have a ton of minors. So you could double major, you can add minors to your major. Um, and then of course we have our graduate offerings as well. So we do have over 12 graduate offerings as well as graduate pathways to help our students earn advanced degrees more easily. You can see an example of one of those on this slide, which is our three plus three law program with Delaware Widener Law School. So we definitely encourage our students to take advantage of these um, to help earn their advanced degrees. We are located in Malvern, Pennsylvania, so we're right outside of Philadelphia. Um, we're in a really great location around a bunch of businesses as well as um, hospitals and other healthcare facilities, which really enhances our students' ability to do those internships. You can see some of the ones that more current students have done over the past year or so. Um, and then of course, you can see where some of our students have um, been hired after graduation as well on this slide. So we are in a really great location. We have public transportation available on campus for our students and all of our students are allowed cars if they want to all four years. So multiple ways to get to these internships and field experiences when you complete them. These are just some ways you can get involved in Immaculata. There's a ton you can do. We have our students start getting involved in building those resumes the second they start their freshman year. We wanna make sure they're well-rounded and that they're getting a lot of experience. So you can be involved in clubs, you can be involved in Greek life, leadership opportunities, we have service opportunities. And then of course we have athletics as well that you could join. Um, these next few slides are just going to show you a little peek into what campus looks like. Um, we do have five residence halls on campus. We have our traditional style um, rooms, our suite style dorm rooms, and our apartment buildings as well. Um, we do have 77% of freshmen that are living on campus. You are guaranteed housing all four years, but you don't have to live on campus if you don't want to. Um, we do have laundry rooms, they are free for students, um, and all of our residence halls are air conditioned as well. So on the left side of the screen, you can see a peek into what a traditional freshman style dorm room looks like. Um, so every freshman style dorm room does has two closets, which is really awesome for space saving. You'll get a sink and vanity mirror, and then of course you can control the air conditioning in your room as well. Um, and as I mentioned, you can have a car on campus, so parking is available for freshmen. This is just a little bit of a peek into our IHM Student Center. This is one of our newer buildings on campus. So we're always constantly adding to campus um, and we're getting ready to build our brand new Parsons Science Pavilion. So we're gonna be starting on that this month and this will be finished in the class summer of 2022. Um, so it's gonna have all new labs. There's an anatomage table for our anatomy and physiology students to do virtual reality dissections. Um, and of course, a collaboration space that our students will get to utilize. So very helpful for anyone interested in the sciences. Um, some admissions requirements, we are rolling admissions. There's no application deadlines and our application is free for all students. So you could apply through the Common App or you can apply through our personal application on our website, um, which always opens in August. Um, once we receive your completed application, we'll need your high school transcript, at least one letter of recommendation, a personal essay, and we are test optional for all majors, except for allied health and nursing. So anyone interested in nursing, um, your requirements are a little bit different. I'll need two letters of recommendation versus one. Um, your personal essay will be on a specific topic focused in the nursing career, um, and your test scores will be required as well. 
Um, and then finally, just to go over a little bit of financial aid, we are committed to making tuition as affordable as possible for our students. Um, we did lower tuition a few years back um, and haven't gone past 17,000 since then. Um, so this year, tuition is 16,900 and that is locked in for next year, which is really awesome. Um, in addition, all of our students do receive a um, academic merit scholarship when they're accepted into the university to help make tuition a little bit affordable, more affordable. Um, and then, of course, there's other forms of financial aid that you can get as well as far as um, scholarships and grants and work study as well. So um, you can see our FAFSA code on there if you need it. And then, of course, there's our Centennial Scholarship, um, which is our highest awarded um, scholarship. And then if anyone has any questions at all, this is our contact information. So please definitely feel free to email us or phone us. We'd be more than happy to meet with you and set up a visit on campus. Megan, thank you so much for sharing Immaculata with us today. So we've heard from three grade schools so far and we have three to go. Just wanted to remind our attendees that that Q&A box is there where you can enter a question um, to a specific school or for all of our schools to make sure that you're getting a little of the info that you are looking for tonight or to follow up on something you might have heard in a presentation. All right, so our next school today is going to be the University of New England. Hi there, everyone. My name is Joshua Carbonell. I'm an admissions counselor here, undergraduate admissions at the University of New England. We are a private four-year liberal arts institution in Maine. We have a few campuses, so just want to touch upon our three campuses and some opportunities here available to you at the University of New England. Pictured on your screen now is our Biddeford campus, which is our main undergraduate campus. This is where the vast majority of all students would start and end their time as an undergraduate student. As you can see, we are right on the coastline. We are here on the coast of Biddeford, Maine, with about 4,000 feet of water frontage and on private campus beach, kind of situated in top center of your picture there. Overall, the entire campus is about 500 acres of land, um, and the majority of the facilities are pictured here. What you can't see are a few of the academic and the athletic facilities, which are not in the image right here. The Biddeford campus is home to about 2,300 students, and that equates to about 22 students per class with a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. So we really do like to keep it really small in the classroom, especially so at the undergraduate level, because getting hands on is really important. It's a really important part of our entire academic instructional model here at the university. So making sure you have those small class sizes really goes a long way to making sure you can get that opportunity to get to know your peers really well, get to connect with your professors, and also again, get really hands on. Learning by doing is always a little bit better than learning by reading all the time. Uh, so I wanna get you as hands on as we can and dive into experiential learning um, throughout your entire time here as a uni student. As I mentioned, we have a few campuses. We've been talking about the Biddeford campus. Our second campus is in Portland, Maine. Our Portland campus is about 25 minutes north from the Biddeford campus. Our Portland campus is our graduate and professional studies campus. And given that a lot of our programs are in the health sciences, this campus is home to a lot of those programs at the graduate and professional level. So if you're a student who's pursuing a certain medical pathway, there's a good chance you could end up on the, Bit on the Portland campus after your time on the Biddeford campus. The Portland campus is home to the College of Dental Medicine, as well as the School of Pharmacy and programs such as occupational therapy, physical therapy, physician assistant, social work, and the final two years of nursing and dental hygiene. Nursing and dental hygiene students will spend their first two years on the Biddeford campus and their latter two years up on the Portland campus. So there's that subtle distinction there with the Biddeford campus being the undergrad campus and the Portland campus being our graduate and professional studies campus. Admittedly, a little bit farther away, our third campus is over in Tangier, Morocco. Our Tangier campus was completed about eight years ago, so still relatively new to the UNI family. And as you can imagine, this is one of our study abroad opportunities. This one is a bit unique though, because it's our own campus. And we built our own campus internationally to really have the health professional students in mind. It's often really hard to go abroad as a health professional student, especially in those rigorous programs such as nursing. Uh, so we simply built our own campus that has all the facilities and labs students need in the health professions to still stay right on pace to graduate. In addition to our Morocco campus, we also have sister programs across Europe at other universities. And we also balance those out with an array of travel courses, which are short one to two week trips that go out throughout the world. There's about 15 to 20 travel courses a year. So ultimately all of those broad opportunities culminate in uni students traveling abroad at about five times the national average. So it really is a really big part of uni culture um, for students to be able to go abroad and have the international experience to really become a global citizen um, and not just study here in the United States. 
On screen now are all of our undergrad programs. Definitely would like to emphasize undergrad. We, as I mentioned, have a lot of graduate and professional studies pathways. You can see some of those pre-health pathways reflected on the screen there for students who may be interested in moving on to that second level in the medical world. Here at UNE, our flagship programs are in the health sciences as well as the marine and the environmental sciences. We are right on the coast with a marine science center being one of the only few in the country to be right on the ocean. So our marine environmental programs are quite robust and we are Maine's only medical school and the only dental school north of Boston in New England, as well as Maine's largest nursing and pharmacy programs. Um, so certainly have a lot of um, programs in the health sciences and the marine sciences, but we are grounded and founded in the liberal arts. So you see that balance on screen with those liberal arts and humanities programs. So it really does create a really robust student culture with a lot of students pursuing different pathways here at the university. And in addition to in the classroom, as I alluded to earlier, experiential learning is a really big part of the university, really like to get students hands on and some examples on screen, um, starting from the left to the right, there's students working in the field actually that's in Vermont, they were doing some summer research, research is a really big part of the student population, we are an R2 research institution with a lot of research activity here at the university. In the middle there, you can certainly see some marine science students out on a boat. This is internationally, but our marine science students also benefit from the fleet of vessels that we have right here on campus that they can take out um, from the campus docks to do research in and around campus or on our private island a couple of miles off the coast of campus. And then again, our health science students really benefit from having a lot of labs and facilities right here on campus to start practicing with actual patients before they move into the real world setting. But of course, going to college is all about balance and it's not just about academics, that's really a small part of it. The student experience is a really big part of it as well. So really like to try to support you with having that balance as much as we can. Um, and that really comes through student life. There are 90 clubs and organizations here on campus to make sure you can stay active out of the classroom and find those areas that may be interested in getting involved in. Athletics is certainly a big part of uni student life and energy as well. We are division three athletics with 18 varsity sports uh, with about 50% of the student body participating in athletics in some capacity. So certainly a big part of the university and just the overall culture on campus. And of course, we are on the coast, as you saw in that first picture. So there's no way we don't utilize the ocean. Um, everything from recreation to paddleboarding and surfboarding and kayaking um, that we have all available for students. Um, but in addition to simply exploring the coastline, sitting out on the campus beach, having beach fires, um, whatever it is, the coast is here for us for research purposes, but as well as for leisure as well. And then lastly, just to show you some important information, if you're interested in applying to UNE, we have multiple applications available to you. Um, this year, more than ever, test policy is really important policy. We are test blind, so you don't need to send in your scores to the university. And our first application date to keep in mind is November 15th. And of course, stay in touch. If you have any questions for us, always happy to connect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joshua, for sharing more about the University of New England. Our next presentation is going to be the Columbus College of Art and Design. All right, hi everybody. My name is Marie and I'm a senior admissions counselor at Columbus College of Art and Design located in Columbus, Ohio. So my role is to help you through the college admissions process. What does that mean? Um, as admissions counselors, we help students just like you learn more about your college options and potential career paths. We also help you build a better portfolio for your application to CCAD and navigate the financial aid process. So, a little bit more about CCAD. Um, we are a private nonprofit art and design college, one of the oldest in the country, founded in 1879. Our student to faculty ratio is nine to one. So that means our classes are small enough to give you, you know, a lot of a personal attention from your professors and large enough that you're able to discuss and receive constructive feedback about your pieces. Whoa, excuse me. All right, so while at CCAD, you'll graduate with a BFA or a Bachelor's of Fine Arts within your chosen major. So if you choose to major in animation, you'll graduate with a BFA in animation. Um, so at CCAD, a BFA program of your curriculum is more studio-based. So this combines your artistic practice with liberal arts courses. At CCAD, about two-thirds of the curriculum is studio-based and the other third is based in the liberal arts. We offer 11 different majors at CCAD, so you can see those here on the screen, as well as numerous different minors and concentrations as well, including our popular business minor, which pairs really well with a lot of different majors, especially if you're interested in starting your own business. You can read more about each major as well as its requirements and view student work on our website at ccad.edu. Um, our application has three main parts, so we require your GPA, 
We are test optional, so we don't require ACT or SAT scores. We require a short essay, three to 500 words. There are a few different prompts you can choose from. And then we also look at a portfolio of your artwork. So CCAD and the Columbus Arts Team provide students with a chance to network and develop relationships with individuals within the industry all before even graduating. So we know that when it comes to being a successful artist, not only about what you know, but also who you know as well. So if you're a student who's interested in writing scripts, you should meet an alumni like Angelo Thomas, an independent filmmaker, screenwriter, and novelist. Um, the artwork that you see on the screen is based off of a novel he wrote with the same title, and the cover work itself is actually done by fellow CCAD student Casey Nequadu. Maybe you're interested in creating a designer brand, in which case you should meet someone like Susanna Madrid. So after graduating from CCAD, Susanna moved to Milan, Italy to pursue her graduate degree in fashion design. While she was there, she had the opportunity to design shoes for Neil Barrett. And while she was there, she fell in love with the design and production process. So Susanna was inspired to launch her own luxury shoe line that embodies the made in Italy artistry and craftsmanship that she so admires. Her shoes are currently sold at Print Temps in Paris and online at SusannaMadrid.com. And if you're ever in the Columbus area, you can also find them at the Thread Boutique in Grandview. Another CCAD alumni you should definitely look into if you're interested in animation is Dan Scanlon. He's directed Disney animations like Onward, Monsters University, and worked on numerous other Disney features as well. Meeting the right people can definitely change the entire course of your career development. All right, so we'd love for you to join us in our CCAD community and become part of our amazing network of artists and designers. And a big part of the CCAD experience is on campus. So CCAD offers two different on-campus housing options one for incoming freshmen and the other for upperclassmen. So Schottenstein Residence Hall is our option for incoming freshmen. It's pretty typical, or excuse me, pretty typical dorm style housing. So each suite has two bedrooms, two students per room. So you'd have one direct roommate and three roommates total, and then a shared kitchenette living area, and then a shared restroom space as well. Design Square Apartments is our option for upperclassmen and it's more apartment style living. So each student gets their own room and there is a larger kitchenette space as well. So you might be asking yourself, why Columbus? Why should I call this place my home for the next four years and begin my professional life here? So I personally moved to Columbus almost three years ago, right after I completed my BFA degree. And I can honestly say it's a really wonderful city for young professionals, especially in creative fields. As the fastest growing major metropolitan area in the US, Columbus is one of the top 10 cities for recent college graduates. And it's also a thriving artistic community home to things like the Columbus International Film and Animation Festival, which is the oldest film festival in the United States, the Short North Arts District, which showcases homegrown and international talents, and the indie art scene thrives at old converted warehouses like 400 West, West Rich and Millworks Art Studios. Uh, not to mention our next door neighbor, the Columbus Museum of Art, which features several different permanent collections, as well as rotating exhibits. And if you're a CCAD student, you even get free access with your CCAD student ID. So now that you know more about us, we'd really like to learn more about each of you. If you're watching this on a computer or tablet and you think CCAD sounds like a good fit for you, simply take out um, your phone camera and hold it over this QR code. It will automatically take you back to a quick questionnaire where you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and your interests. And thank you so much for joining today. If you have any additional questions, you can reach us at admissions at ccad.edu and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marie, for presenting on Columbus College of Art and Design. All right, we're heading to our sixth school today. We're going to be hearing from Washington and Jefferson College. All right. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Nicole Shannon. I'm an Associate Director of Admission here at WNJ. Um, so where is Washington, Pennsylvania? We're in the bottom left-hand corner of the state of PA. Uh, we are the county seat, so in the city of Washington, there's always a lot going on, a lot of hustle and bustle. Um, that's where our courthouse is located. There's a farmer's market every week. There's a lot of locally owned restaurants and businesses and shops as well. But we're only 30 minutes outside of the city of Pittsburgh. So here's a picture of the city of Pittsburgh. Um, there's a lot to do for college age students, especially a lot of free and fun activities to do in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, and we do operate a shuttle that goes to and from our campus um, in Washington, PA, 
downtown to Pittsburgh for students if you want to go do something fun on the weekends in the city um, or if you have like an internship or job opportunity there as well. A couple of facts about Pittsburgh. Number one, travel destination for Generation Z. Uh, a lot of festivals throughout the year, top city for foodies, seven Fortune 500 companies, um, one of the top 25 college towns. Like and in also- In it? I'm sorry? Hey, Nicole, just wanted to let you know that your internet, you paused and froze for just a minute. So I just wanted to let you know, oh. and then you pop back on. So I just wanted to let you know about that in case you wanted oh. to double check anything. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So a brief history of the college. We were founded in 1781. Um, We actually were founded as two separate colleges, Washington College and Jefferson College. We have always been right here on our campus. Um, The top three photos actually are all buildings that were built a long time ago that have been on our campus pretty much for as long as it's been around. Academics here at WNJ, we're a small private liberal arts and sciences college. We have a 10 to one student faculty ratio, close to about 80% actually of our classes have less than 20 students in them. Um, Most of our faculty members are full-time faculty with terminal degrees and about 40% of our students study abroad. Um, Here's a list of all of our majors and minors. We have 32 majors and 34 minors. Our more popular programs are business administration, accounting, economics, communication arts, and political science, but our students pretty much study everything across the board. No two WNJ students are the same. Uh, we also offer a variety of pre-professional programs. So if you're interested in 3-2 engineering, our partnerships are Case Western Reserve University, Washington University, Columbia University, and the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, education, so we offer elementary, middle level, and high school education. Pre-health and pre-law are basically what we're known for as a college. Um, We have an over 90% placement rate, both into medical schools and law schools. Um, So it's a very successful place to go into any of our pre-professional programs, but especially pre-health and pre-law. Our Magellan project is unique to WNJ. It's an opportunity for a student to live out a passion project of their choice anywhere in the world, and it's completely funded by WNJ. So there are some examples on the screen, but it can be a passion project. It doesn't have to go along with your major. It doesn't have to be academic at all. Um, just something that you're interested in doing, or if you find an internship somewhere in the world, the college can fund you for your housing, transportation, things along those lines. We also offer a variety of other study abroad options and about half of our students do them. Oops, sorry. Uh, we have over 35 partnerships in 20 countries and students can go for anywhere from two weeks up to a year. You can actually study abroad by doing three Magellan projects, uh, three or four J terms, which is a two week mini semester in January and four semesters or two full years abroad. Uh, We have 70 clubs and organizations as well as performing arts, publications, academic clubs, um, pretty much, I mean, something for everyone on our campus. We have 26 division three men's and women's athletic programs and we are very competitive in our conferences, uh, which is the president's athletic conference. As far as outcomes, 97% of our students are employed or continuing their education within six months of graduation. Over 90% uh, pre-health and pre-law acceptance for about 20 years now. Um, And 100% of our students are accepted into graduate schools. How can you become a WNJ student? You can submit an application beginning on August 1st if you are a current uh, junior in high school. We are a member of the Common App or you can apply using our leadership application. The only thing required is a high school transcript, but you're welcome to submit your test scores, your personal statement, letters of rec, um, and of course, demonstrating interest. We do have three deadlines, early decision, early action, regular decision, and rolling admission. However, uh, regardless of when or how you apply, you'll receive your admission decision in just two weeks. Um, Here is a list of all of our scholarships, our merit-based scholarships that are offered to all students. Every single accepted student receives one of these scholarships. And they range anywhere from $23,000 to $34,000 per year. Um, It's based on mostly your GPA and anything else that you submit to us. So it's great to take a look at this before deciding what you want to submit um, because it may, you know, help you out with the um, merit-based scholarship process. And uh, 99% of our applicants receive some type of federal financial aid. Our average institutional aid award is about $30,000. So anything through the FAFSA would be on top of that. And a couple important dates, our application opens on August 1st. 
Uh, the FAFSA opens on October 1st. Our priority financial aid deadline is on February 1st and National Decision Day, of course, is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Um, the full timeline, once you submit your application, you'll receive your decision letter within two weeks. You'll receive your merit-based scholarship about a week after that. And as long as we have your FAFSA, you'll receive your full financial aid offer two weeks after that. Um, so I'll put my information in the chat. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll be the representative for your area. And thank you so much for listening to all of us today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nicole, for presenting on Washington and Jefferson College. All right, we've heard from six great programs. Um, I want to give everyone an extra couple minutes to be able to get information from the chat, you know, copy that contact information down, and, um, and if to think of any last questions you might want to ask. So while we're doing that, I have a question for all of our representatives. I'd like to invite everybody to come back on, one representative from each school to come back on camera. So we'll have each of our six uh, representatives answer a question. So um, I'd love to hear from each of you about a favorite tradition or an event on campus. It could be academic, career-related, student life, just something that um, is important to your campus community um, and to your student body. So we're going to go in the exact same order that we presented. When the representative ahead of you finishes, feel free to just turn off, turn on your microphone and just answer, and we'll just kind of flow through. So we're going to start with Megan at Pace. Uh, first, thanks for kicking it off. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so my favorite PACE tradition is our Weeks of Welcome. So we're in New York um, and Weeks of Welcome are really to get all of our students acclimated to life in New York and just to show you everything that you can do and take advantage of. So you can go see Broadway shows, you can go see the Yankees, you can go to museum openings. Maybe they'll be bringing someone on campus to do a fun event on campus like drag bingo or teach you how to do some dance from a Broadway show. So that is my favorite. Um, and also there's free food. So who's mad about that? No one. Okay, well, um, unfortunately we don't have free food. But uh, when it comes to <laughs> uh, when it comes to our tradition, uh, we are a member of the Aerospace Maintenance Council, and this is a competition run by them. And our students get to go to Orlando, Florida, or uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, they have a competition. And our students get to represent uh, our school. And the cool part is you have companies like Boeing and General Electric supplying a lot of equipment. And again, uh, they compete and they do quite well. And like I said, the students enjoy. Uh, you know, leaving the campuses and spending uh, a few days in Orlando or possibly Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, we haven't done it this year due to COVID, but we have been doing it for a number of years uh, before COVID hit. So thank you. Um, so at Immaculata, we have a lot of traditions. My favorite is Carol Night, which is held every year around Christmas time, um, right before the students go on Christmas break. Um, so we get a huge Christmas tree do donated to us, which reaches almost up to the third floor of our rotunda, which is decorated. Um, they put gold balls on it to represent all the seniors in the graduating class that year. And then current students, alumni, friends, family, faculty, IHM sisters, we all circle around the tree on all three levels and just listen to Christmas carols together. Our choir performs um, and the seniors get to stand on the first floor around the tree as like a senior perk, which is really cool. So it's a fun way to celebrate Christmas as a family at the university before all the students go home to their own families for the holidays. So one of my favorite events at the University of New England um, is our annual teddy bear toss. And to explain, um, hockey is such a big part of the university. Our teams are always in the championship or re representing us at the NCAA AA tournament. Um, so it's really just a big part of campus culture. Um, but a few years ago, we created the teddy bear toss, which is an event when during the first goal that's scored by our men's and women's teams during double header nights, um, everyone in the crowd will toss a teddy bear or stuffed animal onto the ice. Great for us really annoying for the away team, um, but it's always a ton of fun. And the idea is to collect all these teddy bears and then they're then donated to the local United Way. Um, so it's a really big part of the campus culture. It brings not only the students, but the local community um, and alumni and staff as well. We always sell out the hockey ring for those events. Um, and it's just nice to be connected to the community like that as well, kind of in a lighthearted sort of way, but teddy bear toss every winter uh, during the season. Um, I think my favorite event at CCAD is our um, semesterly art fair. So current students, faculty members, and alumni can all have, you know, a booth there and sell the things that they make. So if it's a student, they can like sell projects they made in classes. If it's an alumni who has a studio practice, 
they can sell their stuff there. It's also a really fun opportunity to see like what our faculty have been doing outside of teaching. So that's a really fun event that's open to like the whole community. So it's one of my favorite days every semester. So my favorite event at um, WNJ is probably different than what a lot of the students would say their favorite event is, but um, it's within the first week and our president actually hosts like a whole block party at his house, which is right on campus. Um, so, you know, there's one night where all the students are invited. There's another day where all the faculty and staff are invited. But then at the end, we all get to come together and like make s'mores or have nachos on the front porch. And it's just a great way to all like join back together after a summer apart from one another, especially for our students who are traveling or doing internships or, or different experiences around the world. Um, and that's definitely my favorite as, you know, a staff member at the college. I love hearing about each of these events because no matter what part of the student experience it covers, academic, you know, career, student life, just community building, um, I you know think it's so awesome for everyone watching. I hope they think, oh, I want to check that out more. You know, go on social media and think, oh, could I see myself there participating? It's a great way to just get a little extra insight. So thank you all for sharing. Um, it's one of my favorite questions. Um, well, we reached the end of our time together today. First, want to say thank you to all of our panelists and presenters, all the admissions representatives who are here um, for not just sharing those facts, figures, all those logistics of the experience um, of the admissions process, but just your passion for the students' opportunities in and out of the classroom that you all have. And thank you to all of our attendees who've watched either live or on the recording. We hope this is inspiring you. This has just been like a tiny taste of each of these programs. So there's so much more to learn. So please reach out to the admissions counselors, ask questions. They're your best allies um, and are your number one go-to resource to learn more about what possibilities could await for you. So we hope this has made you even more curious and excited for what's to come. As we close out tonight, when you close your window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can provide. I mean, four questions, super easy, everybody. So thank you for taking the time to do that. Also, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted for Pennsylvania students. We hope that you'll sign up for more and that you've enjoyed any other presentations you've attended thus far. In about a week's time, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at that same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. So thanks again, everyone, for taking time out of your day to be here or to watch this on recording. We really hope that you feel inspired and excited. Best wishes in your college search and decision journey. It's a lot of fun and uh, have a great night, everybody. <laughs>